convenience. Um, for those of you that haven't, um, our producers recently made the decision not to move forward with the show. And um, that statement was released today, earlier on this afternoon. And um, yeah, um, a bunch of us in the cast were notified yesterday, before which we were all under the impression that we were moving towards uh, going for season six. So, you know, before I, I know I can tell a lot of you guys are, are tweeting, you know, I've uh, saved the show and let's talk to CBC and let's talk to Netflix. And I just wanted to set the record straight here. Um, this decision had nothing to do with the CBC and it had nothing to do with Netflix. It came from production. Um, it's a, it is an unusual situation to say the least, because um, for those of you that have been keeping track with our show, we did receive a two season order last year when we completed season four for both seasons five and season six. So we technically received a green light for it, but, um, you know, circumstances conspired in which we lost our two showrunners. Um, and this was something that we were aware of, um, we, a few months ago, but, um, yeah, we uh it was always our intention to kind of move forward from this and in fact to you know potentially even take the show in new and exciting directions and um for myself, you know, obviously there's a lot going on in my life right now, but I always always loved Kim's Convenience and I always thought that there was more story to tell with Jung and I I cannot tell you how difficult it's been for me season after season because I've always felt like Jung had more to offer for the show and I always you know there was always an internal frustration that that he was not being given you know the right stories and and the right um you know the the arcs and and everything because you know he's the son of the family. He is a Kim and I, I wanted so much for him. And, and, you know, before you guys get all crazy, I mean, this stuff happens on every show, right? We, you can't, every actor can't be satisfied all the time. Of course, we're all going to have our opinions. So that's not to say, go and blame this person or that person. I'm just, I'm just echoing my own personal frustrations. Um, but yeah, um, that decision, the decision from production came from um, what they say was, a, you know, basically feeling like the show would not be the same without the, the co-creators that were there since day one. And, um, you know, that, that decision superseded the wishes of, of all of the rest of us. So um, that's what happened. Um, we're absolutely gutted and heartbroken for me i can tell you i you know told everyone on my team look we are going to make time for this show and not only are we going to make time for this show we're going to lean in you know we're not going to try to make a graceful exit we're not going to say okay put me in you know two episodes and um you know bow out gracefully or whatever i was like you know what if we're going to do this let's do this properly and give and and let's do it in a way that I can feel like I'm growing as an artist as well. And I've always had aspirations to direct. I've always been a writer myself. I've written for Canadian TV before. Um, I've always wanted to be a participant in the writers' room. So I always kind of wanted to help shape the story. I felt like we had so so much story to tell, and I wanted to direct. Um, so those are all things that I wanted to do. Initially, you know, there were some very positive discussions that were being had. And, um, you know, truth be told, I was feeling really, really optimistic. But, um, you know, we, um, we this is life and, and this is business. And, you know, Kim's Convenience isn't made just by one or two people. It, it really does take a village. And, and, you know, the decision right now is that this village, unfortunately, will not be continuing on. So, um, sorry, so I, I've done a lot of talking, but, uh, you know, uh, I, I can't 
I don't want to speculate as to specific reasons of, you know, why creators wanted to leave. That's not my place. Um, nor do I want to go there right now. I mean, this is a time to really, I think, grieve for the show and to, if it's possible at all, to celebrate all that we've accomplished in our five seasons. Um, and I think it's possible to do that while still being very upset and angry, which I absolutely am. But, um, you know, from the moment our little show premiered in 2016, it has shattered expectations. It's, it debuted as the highest rated Canadian comedy straight from episode one and um, held that title throughout its entire five season run on Canadian TV. After two seasons, it was picked up on Netflix and introduced to a wider audience all around the world. So people in India got to see us, people in Mexico got to watch us, people in you know France and Taiwan and Hong Kong and all over the world, uh, Australia, the UK, South Africa. We were everywhere and, and even when I was shooting Shang-Chi in Sydney, I would get pulled over and, and asked to take photos because I was Jung, not because I was anybody else. And, um, and, and so for a show with no established stars coming in about an immigrant family owning a bodega in the inner city of Toronto to have soared to those heights, I mean, I can't tell you how much it's defied all of our expectations. And and yes, sorry, I'm reading in the comments. Was it even shown in Korea? It it was and it is. Um, it's both on Korean Netflix and also uh, was broadcast on Korean television. And, um, you know, it. Hey, it was it was such an incredible ride and. And it's really uh, you know, the success of the show has been just absolutely unprecedented um there god if there is anything that we can take from this show it's that we have to continue to uplift bipoc voices and creatives and storytellers and we have to continue to fight for diversity and inclusion because this show is the beacon of success for creatives of color and people of color everywhere. It's, it's certainly a beacon of success for Asian Canadians like myself and really just anybody from the Asian diaspora. Um, and that's, that's precisely why it's so difficult to let it go. I've never had a show canceled on me before. I've died. I've died many a times. I, I, uh, Jumped off a bridge on a show called Blood and Water. I was molecularly deconstructed in The Expanse. Um, I've been shot a bunch of times. I was shot to death in dark matter. Um, but I've never had a show canceled. And, and even though, you know, I, I, from a purely financial standpoint, I will be okay. I can't tell you I, how disturbed it felt and, and shocking it felt just to have the rug pulled out from under you. It, it is a terrible feeling. And especially for a show like this, where we saw no writing on the wall, we only saw success and accolades and positive feedback from virtually everybody that we ever talked to about the show. Um, it just it just hit us like a like a bus and um and it's gonna it's gonna really hurt and it's gonna really really take a long time to process but uh for those of you who are just joining in now, I just wanted to clarify that um this decision did not come from the c b c it was not a network decision um nor was it a netflix decision so i mean how are deal structure works is that we are a Canadian show. We're primarily funded by the Canadian Broadcast Corporation and um, Netflix pays a licensing fee to put the show on its you know various platforms around the world. And um, 
ultimately the decision to end the show came from the producer side, which is very unusual. But in this case, we were dealing with two outgoing uh, showrunners uh, who had been with us since day one. And um, we, you know, uh, the producers made a decision uh, to end the show and um, they didn't believe that um, the show could maintain its quality uh, without the showrunners. Um, and uh, to, to be perfectly clear, I think I speak for myself and, and I mean, I don't want to put words in people's mouths, but I think I speak for a lot of us when I say that we, we disagree. We felt like there was so much more story to tell and, and there are a lot of capable storytellers to, to kind of put in that position. It's, it is a hard day. Um, I'm feeling very raw and uh and very sad but um yeah i i want to i want to still end off in a positive place if i could and um and talk about just the success of the show how many lives it's touched i mean it is really special when people talk about your show and it's not about oh my god you're you know I love watching your show. I love, you know, it, which is fantastic, by the way, or you're such a great actor, which I don't really hear that often, let's be real. But um, but to hear something like, I watch your show with my dad, or your show helped me navigate my relationship with my mom. I mean, when I when we would hear stories like that, I, it would mean the world to us. We are it made everything worth it, you know? And um, that's truly what I'm uh, gonna miss the most about, um, about, about the show. Uh, is, is, you know, not being able to touch people's lives further and, uh, yeah. You know, feeling like there was a lot more story to tell. Um, yeah. I want you to know that I think the actors are going to be totally fine. I think they've more than proven themselves as, you know, stars of a, of a hit, hit, hit television show. Um, and whether it's Paul or Andrew or Jean or Andrea or Nicole, uh, I know that they'll all go on to, to, to bigger things and, um, you know, it, it's not about their opportunities because there, there will be plentiful and, and it'll all be well-deserved. Um, but I know that they all share in my heartbreak that, that this particular story that meant so much to so many people does not get the, the goodbye that it, it, it deeply, deeply deserves. Um, so yeah. Is it the end of the show? I, it certainly seems that way right now, but I mean, there's always, uh, you know, who knows? They re they brought Fresh Prince back. Like, you know, they brought Full House back. They brought the cast of Fresh Prince back for, um, for a big reunion. And maybe one day there'll be something like that in the cards for, for Kim's. And um, I would certainly come back to this world gladly, you know, um, I've always felt like there was just so much room for Jung in particular to grow. And um, yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, what, what can we do? I don't, I don't know. I don't wanna, look, this isn't the biggest problem that we face in the world today, right? I'm, I'm deeply aware of that. There's, there's lots of other things out there. Um, I don't want to feel like I'm, you know, 
like so caught up in my world and this is all I care about. Obviously, it's a big one right now because it just happened and it's it, it happens to impact my life quite a bit and um still processing it, but um yeah, I don't I don't know. I think for us, I know it means the world for you guys to share how much the show has touched us. So please continue to do that. It will make us feel better for sure. And um you know, stranger things have happened, so continue to voice your thoughts on social media and um you know, at, at this rate though, I I have to say I I don't see a path forward for for the show. Um because it's not as simple as getting a network on board. Um we do have networks on board, but you know, it's not enough right now. And uh, but what you know, I, again, what what we can hope for is that people can celebrate what the show stood for, can continue to live in its legacy. And you know, for those of you guys who are hoping, like myself, for an Appa and Jung reunion um, and a reconciliation, um, you know, imagine what that would be. Imagine that moment and what that would mean for you to watch that on a screen and internalize that and live life by that, you know. Um, just because you didn't watch two people do it on a TV show doesn't mean that you can't learn that lesson and learn a, and open up your heart and and, you know carry on the legacy and the spirit of, of what that moment would have been. So that's my best advice to you. Um, thank you. I can't believe there's still 1900 people tuning in. Um, I'm deeply, deeply grateful that so many of you guys have, um, stayed on with me for, for so long. I know I'm not super responsive to your comments right now. And, uh, yeah, um, I would, I, God, if, uh, if I could, I would write every single episode myself, you know, I would, uh, I would, there's so many storylines to, to kind of explore, but, um, it's not the time for that. Um, if you live in Canada, we still have, uh, I believe we have five or six more episodes of season five that have still not yet aired. So there's still a lot more story. So I would love, you know, would love for you guys to continue to tune in and watch those and make those last few episodes a real celebration of the show and, and of us. Um, and then, you know, for those of you outside of Canada who enjoy Kim's Convenience on Netflix, know that the entire fifth season will, um, be on Netflix after all the seasons have aired on Canadian television. So you're, we're less than two months away. Um, you're going to get to see it. And, um, yeah, it's, um, you know, I look forward to, to your thoughts and, um, there's still, you know, some Kim's convenience content that you have to look forward to. And, um, you know, that's, that's at least a positive. Um, but yeah, yeah. After that, I think it's, uh, it's, it's time to bid farewell. So on that note, thank you so much for listening. Um, it has been an absolute dream to play this character these last five years. Um, a privilege unlike anything I have ever experienced. And um, I will miss you all and the Kims and Kim's Convenience, the store, the characters, our crew, um, so, so deeply. So I love you guys. Say good night, Chopa. Say good night. Chopa. 
Chopa's had a long day, all right? She barked a lot at us out in the water. Um, <laughs> just ran around a bunch. Um, it's a tough life out there for a dog, so yeah. All right, I'll see you guys.